CSIS 1430 is filmed before a live studio audience. All right, so the goal here is we're going to talk about how to make navigation menus, okay? Before we do that, though, I want to just point out a couple things here. These two books I have here, they are design theory books, if you will. This first one here is called The Non-Designer's Design Book. It's by Robin Williams, not the actor, just a lady named Robin Williams. And this is a book for print, like print media, like making flyers and brochures and things like that. But it has a lot of great information about typography, about font spacing, font styles, padding, alignment, things like that, which can be very useful in a web page. But you'll see in the book lots of pictures of little flyers and you know, maybe a resume or a letter or something like that being written. But it's mainly there just to show you how to lay things out. Not everything translates fully to the web, but it does give you some ideas. And I've used this book on plenty of occasions to flip through and I'm looking at my website and something just doesn't look right. And then I flip through this book and I see something about spacing or alignment. And I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. If I just, I got two sort of contrasting fonts together or they're too close together or they're too far apart or something. And I get an idea from that book. So that's a good book. The other one, probably arguably a better book. I'd recommend both to be in your library. This one is called Don't Make Me Think. It's by Steve Krug. And this book, every time he makes a new edition, I buy the new edition. And that's 40 bucks a pop. That's how much it's worth to me. To, I'm willing to pay that every time it comes out with a new edition. The idea of this book is it's user experience on the web. User experience. You'll hear that term in your career as a web programmer, UX, user experience. Okay. What it's about, don't make me think. When I land on your web page, I shouldn't have to think even for a nanosecond what I'm supposed to do. Not even for a split second. Now, obviously, it's impossible to get to zero thinking, right? But that's the idea is reduce the thinking as much as possible. So a simple thing like click here to get started, something like that. You'll notice if we go to Canvas, the first thing you see is a big yellow button that says start here, right? I'm hoping that when you logged into this page for the first time a month ago or whatever, when the semester started, the first thing you did was clicked on that button. My hope was that right? Because it's right there. I've even considered removing the other buttons and having nothing there but just that, right? When you go, when you click on that, it's a video about the course and it tells you what those other three buttons are for and it tells you how to navigate the course and everything, right? So the goal was to, where you didn't have to get, come in here and be overwhelmed and confused and not know what to do. And I tried to think of all the questions that a student might ask, like, I wonder what Jeff's office hours are. Well, there they are right there on the screen on the home page, right? That was my thinking and it was inspired by this book, Don't Make Me Think. I don't know if I've mastered these skills or whatever, but that was the goal. All right, let's build a menu. Let's build a navigation menu. Right now, we have this. Just a bunch of bullet points here that don't really do much. But if I had this, just like your pizza contact form assignment, if you have this on four pages and you click from one to the next to the next, you are navigating between the pages on the site but this doesn't look like a menu. Let's make it look like a menu, right? And by menu, I don't mean your pizza menu. I mean a navigation menu, right? Okay, the very first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna target the LI here, all the LIs and all the anchor tags, okay? The way you can do that, there's lots of ways, put a class on it, do whatever, but you can actually say this, UL, LI, what that does is that says, starting from the right to the left, right right to left, backwards, give me all the LIs that are inside of a UL. That's what that means. And I want to make them display inline block. Their default is block, right? We're gonna make them inline block. The reason we wanna make them inline block is because, behold, we get this. Just that alone looks like a menu. Like, looks a lot better than it did, right? Agreed? But we can do a little bit more, obviously. So let's, I'm gonna put a border on it. That's my mantra, I always tell you, put a border on it. So let's put a border on it, see what we what's going on here, okay? Now on the inside is the anchor. I'm gonna put a border on the anchor tag as well, because I'm gonna show you something. So I can target that by saying U-L-L-I-A. This means, from right to left, give me all the anchors that are inside of an L-I 
which li is inside of a ul. That's what that means. Okay. So that'll target all the anchors, and I'm going to do a border, two pixels, teal. Okay. Refresh, and let's do a different one that's a little more contrasting. Sorry. There we go. Look closely at this. Notice here that that black on the top and bottom is on top of the green on the LI. Do you remember from the video from a week ago where we used Slipknot in there and Corey Taylor's name and we were trying to style it and we couldn't? Remember that? So the problem is if it's inline, you can't affect the top and bottom. You can mess with the right and left, but the top and bottom don't really work the way you want them to. So we want to also make the anchor tags display inline block. And now watch what happens when I refresh. It's subtle, but watch it. See that? Now the anchor tag is, I'm affecting the top and bottom of it when I added that border to it. Now if I increase anything in the anchor tag, so if I put some padding on it, let's do 10 pixels or something like that, it will push out its parent. It pushes it out. Whereas if it was not inline block, it would not push it out. It just breaks out of its parent, right? Well, we want it to be inline block so it stays in there and pushes everything out. So with that being the case, whenever you start horizontal navigation, you want the anchor tags inside the LIs and the LIs themselves to both be inline block display type, okay? Well, we don't want that padding was there just for demo purposes. The border was there for demo purposes. Notice those two have the exact same CSS. Well, there's a shortcut. Instead of doing it twice, I can just say this. So now I'm saying, starting from right to left, give me all the anchor tags. By give me, I mean I'm targeting them, right? Give me all the anchor tags that are inside of an LI, which LI is inside of a UL. Give me all those. Also, comma, give me all the LIs that are inside of a UL. Give me those two sets of things, whatever they are, and make them all in line block. Okay? That's what's going on there. So that's a simple little thing, but that will save you a ton of heartache when you're building a menu. Now, I want to put, like, maybe just make this like a horizontal bar across the top, right? With a background color on it or something like that. So what element do I target to put a background color on there? Yeah, the UL, right? Because those list items, they're inside the UL. So if I give this UL a background color, then that'll be the nice little bar because the UL is display block, which takes up the whole page, right? So simple enough. Very top here, we'll just do UL, background color, cyan. Okay, there you go, nice. Now that's the real size, right? I've just had it expanded so you guys can see it. Now notice here, it's not up against the top. It's not up against the left. It's got a margin. That's because the browser has defaults, right? Which is why I always, at the beginning of everything, override them. Talked about that the other day. Margin, zero. Padding, zero. Now I'm overriding the default browser margin and padding by targeting all things. Now I get this, right? That looks okay. So let's think about what do we want to do to make this menu look decent? Center it, maybe, okay. And do you like distribute them evenly? Yep, yeah. yeah. okay. So let's just center it. And how would I do that? So this is a good question. If I target the anchor tag, it'll center it within its box, right? But you saw it's taking up the whole box already, so it's already kind of centered, right? If I target the LI, same issue. I want to, tar I want to center the whole group. So I want to center the stuff that's inside the UL, right? The text in the UL which is all the text, air quotes, is the LIs, right? So if I just say text align center, bam, bam, centers it, right? Now I heard somebody mention the margin auto trick. I want to make sure you understand the difference between those two. So quickly, I'm going to get some Metallica text here. I'm just going to put a paragraph right here below the H1 that has my Metallica text in it. And then in my CSS, this is just temporary. We're going to remove this in just a minute. But I want to target all the paragraphs, which is just that one. And we're going to say width is 300 pixels and 
let's just leave it at that for a moment and give it a color background color yellow so here's our text right the yellow paragraph normally if i didn't put a width on it it'd take up the whole width of the page right but i put a width on it so it sticks right there now if i want to center that text that's text align text align centers the text in the paragraph box but if i want to center the entire box itself that's where you use the margin auto trick right so margin give it some margin for top and bottom five pixels zero pixels whatever and then auto for left and right that centers the box right and i can get rid of the center alignment on the text and it centers the box but the text will be left aligned or whatever so that's the difference between the two if you're, if you're centering the whole element margin auto if you're centering just the text then text align get rid of this go back to where we were okay what else can we do i mean it looks okay already you know whether we like the colors or not doesn't matter but it looks okay but we can make it better what can we do so let's space those out a little bit and all you'd have to do pretty much the rest of the styling for the menu happens in this area right here the anchor tags because as i showed you earlier when you change the anchor it pushes out the the parent the li so we just can do some padding or some padding we'll do padding what 10 i don't know for everything looks all right yeah okay Yes, the underline is terrible. So that's a really easy thing to change. There's a property called text decoration. Set it to none. You can set it to underline. You can set it to overline. You can set it to strike through, I think, or something like that. So it puts a line through it. I can't remember the exact word, but you can look it up on W3Schools. But none that removes that. Also, just quickly, I'm going to change the font family to Tahoma. I like that font. And now that's a decent looking menu right there, right? I don't like the link colors though. Let's change those. So we'll change the font color. Let me color Wyatt. Oh, that's going to be hideous, man. <laughs> Woo! That's bright. Let's try black. Okay, that'd probably look cool. Yeah, it looks good. I like that. Okay, so there we go. There's a decent menu, right? But you bring up a good point. Let's make something happen when they hover over it, right? Because, yeah, your mouse turns to a pointer, but you don't quite see it, all right? So let's fix that real quick, and it's very easy. This is a new way to select things, where you take the thing that you want to select, and then you're going to put colon hover. This is what's called a pseudo selector. What it means is, starting from right to left, give me all the anchor tags that are in their hover state, in other words, something's hovering over them, those anchor tags that are in hover state that are inside of an LI, which LI is inside of a UL, right? Give me those, okay? And I will just say color, we'll do your yellow for the hover, how's that? So now when I hover, it turns yellow, okay? It's a little bit of an eyesore, but it's not too bad, okay? One thing I like to do is reverse the color palette when I hover. So change the color of the text to cyan. Change the background color to black. Now when I hover, the text turns the color of the background and the background turns the color of the text, right? That's an okay effect, right? Well, what if when I click on home, I want it to stay highlighted like that so that I know I'm on the home page. Okay, again, this is not the prettiest menu, right? This, I'm just showing you the concepts here. I'm not trying to teach you fancy styles, okay? So how could I make that stay like that on the home page? Or if I'm on the contact page, stay like that on the contact page. Before we change that, let's make sure we have those other pages. Right now on my desktop, we don't have those other pages, okay? So let's just, here's our index. Let's copy and paste it. Now I have all the pages, so I'll open them all up in Notepad. 
So real quick, now that I've got them all open, let's just quickly change the title here so we know which page we're on. This is just like you did on your pizza website, your pizza form, and we'll put about there. Okay, so now we at least have it functioning now. I click contact, I'm on the contact page, about on the about, and order on the order. Now that I'm on contact, I want contact to be highlighted. How can I do that? Very good. On that, on whatever page I'm on, target the LI. So how do I target it only on this page or only on that page? Yeah, create a class on it. Yeah, so just on the home page, let's, uh, we're on the about page right now. On the about page, we'll create a class called, I don't know, current page, active, well, pick a name, doesn't matter. Okay, active. And so right now on the about page, if I'm on the about page, that will be there. So now in my CSS, I just need to give it this code right here for class active. Well, remember, I can just say dot active right there. It means give me anything that has a class of active. Also give me all the hovered A's that are in LIs that are in ULs and apply this style to them. So now I refresh and I go to the about page and it stays like that, okay? Now I don't have to make it stay black and blue like that, right? I can say, oh, for the hover class, we're gonna do something different. For the active class, we'll say something like this. We'll say background color is white. And check this out. When I refresh it now, it looks like it's sort of tabbed, right? I hover over it, I get that effect, but when I'm on the page, it looks like a tab. Also, I can just now in my index page on the home, apply the class there, active. So on the home page, the home tab will have that class applied to it. On the order page, it'll have that class applied to it. And on the contact page, on contact class active. Now when I refresh, go home, it looks like a tab. I go to contact, it looks like a tab. About, tab, and order, tab, okay? One last little fun thing you can do if you want. Put in the UL, just a little padding on the top, five pixels. That'll push the tabs down just a hair. Then, on the actual anchors, give them a border radius, okay? Here's what border radius does. So imagine a box here, which is easy to do since there's one on the screen, and there's this corner, then this one, then this one, then this one. Border radius, there's more to it than what I'm about to show you, but the basic idea is it will round the corner. How exactly that works, we'll maybe talk about another time but you can take the border radius property and you can give it four values. The value for that, then that, then that, then that, right? So for my border radius, I can say I want the top left to be like five pixels, the top right to be five pixels, and the other two to be zero. So it'll just be the default. Now when I refresh, a little rounded effect on there, see that? And when I hover, it also has this rounded bit there. Again, not the most exciting looking thing, but it's now it's a decent looking menu. So any questions so far about what we've covered? Now let's look at something a little bit more exciting and that's a drop down menu. Okay, how to make a drop down menu. So let's say we're gonna hover over about and it's gonna drop down a couple options, all right? So first of all, let's think about the, the HTML. Let's just build this only inside the home page. So we're gonna, if we're on the home page and I hover, it'll show up there and then copy and paste it into the other pages later. Let's do about. So inside the about element, we're going to put another whole menu, a UL, LI, and anchors, a whole new menu. So UL, LI, and the href, we'll just have it go nowhere for now. And it's gonna be about, I don't know, the owners of the company or something like that. And we'll close the anchor and the LI. So there's one, and then we're gonna have something else like about job opportunities or something like that, about jobs, all right? And then we'll close out the UL. There you go. So there's your menu. Now, it doesn't work the way you want it to work just yet, but all we need really is just some using our positioning knowledge from the other day, and we'll be okay. And there's a couple little tweaks, but that's about it. So now, look what's happened. It's actually there. When I hover over it, it works just like we expected, but about above it, which is kind of what we expected, we just need owner and job to be directly below about, and we need about to be back on this edge here where it's supposed to be, right? 
So how can we get owners and jobs? We want them to be underneath each other, you know, one under, under the other. So what's causing them to be next to each other? They're inline, inline blocks. We need to turn them back to the block display, right? So you can, if you wanted to, target as follows. Give me all the LIs which are in a UL, which are in an LI, which are in a UL. You can do that. It'd be UL, LI, UL, LI, right? That's a lot and it can get messy. So just put a class on it, right? And then target the class. So we're gonna target the UL, give it a class of like top menu or something like that, or sorry, sub menu. So we can target the sub menu. And the first thing I wanna do, we'll put all this at the top here. In my UL.sub menu, I want to get my hands on the LIs. So LI, and this means from right to left, give me all the LIs which are inside of a UL that has a class name of submenu. That's what's happening there. Okay, bam. Bam, there you have it like that, all right? And I'll just say display block. This will already get us like halfway there. There we go. Now this is what we want, right? It's underneath about, but we want them to be their own little separate menu, right? One thing, we can put a little square border around it so we can sort of see it, and then we'll just push, the down, push it down using positioning, right? Okay, so we'll go with the UL submenu, and we'll just say border, one pixel, solid black for now. We can change the colors later. And we just wanna push that box down. So how do we do that? Position, yeah, we're gonna use position, yep. You could use padding and margin, but then what it really does is puts a big gap between everything, and we don't want that. We want to just physically move the box. So this is going to be a little different. I can I don't want to do it relative to itself. I want to do it relative to its parent, right? So I'm going to position it. Tell the cat I'm absolutely positioning you, right? Absolute. You will be positioned at top 100. That's where you will be positioned and the cat's going to argue with you and write what's he going to do. He's going to go 100 from the document, right? And I want him to be 100 from his parent. So we go to the parent. What's the parent? This is what we're doing. The parent is this LI right here, right? So let's give that LI a class so we can be a little more specific and we'll say top menu, right? So now I'm going to tell this, this is the cat, right? The UL, the cat from the, the other day. This is the UL. We're going to say, you're absolutely going to be positioned 100 from your parent, attached to your parent. So your parent top menu needs to be positioned relative. And now he's now you notice he moved just a hair. He's now attached to the parent though. Now my number 100 was way off. Okay. We'll fix that right now with our little trick where we look in the inspector, right click, go to inspector, find that in the body right here, underneath UL, down under top menu, there's the sub menu right there. And if I come down to the style right there, it says top, use my arrow keys to go down and scoot it up to where I want it. And I don't know, right, maybe right there, that looks good. Okay, that's 35 pixels down. Looks like I want to kind of scooch it over to the right just there too, right? So I'm going to apply to the left property. I want to move 10 spots over from the left, right? So we're going to go 35 for top and we're going to go left, like about push it over about 10. And there we go. That's pretty good. Okay. Good enough. Now, obviously the real question is, okay, but it's just hanging out there, right? I need to toggle it when they hover or something. Okay. So I'm going to give you your first little peek at responsive web design, which is programming for different devices. Okay. We're going to have a whole lecture on just that subject later. But if I hover over about to make the menu appear, there's a problem with that. You can't hover on a tablet or a phone. So what we're going to do right now is make it to where I click on about and the menu appears. And then I unclick, I click again and it disappears, right? So click, click, it toggles it on and off. Okay, easy. Here's how we do it. Very simple. Inside of index, we're going to make a little checkbox. And that checkbox, when it's checked, we want to show the menu. When it's not checked, we want to hide the menu. Okay, let's start with that premise. So I'm going to make an input, 
type is a checkbox and we'll give it an ID called about. It can be called whatever you want, but we're just going to call it about because it's for the about thing. Next, we're going to attach this about as a label instead of an anchor. We're going to make it a label and use the for attribute, which if you did the additional content for your pizza contact form to use a label, you learned about that in there. So here's how that works. We do label and then we have the for attribute and the label is going to say about. And now in the for attribute, let me show you what it does. I'm going to leave it blank first and I refresh. I have this checkbox here. Now I can check it on and off, right? If I check, if I click the label here about, it doesn't do anything. But if I say that this label is for this ID right here, then it now links the two together. Now label is attached to the checkbox. So now when I click on the, the word about, that box gets checked. See that? Now it's checking that box. Now notice two things. Notice when I kept double clicking, it kept highlighting stuff. I don't like that. You can turn that off. Let's just do that real quick. In the star for everything, I'm just going to say user select to none, right? That's a fun little property that just makes it to where they can't select your text anymore. Right? I can't, I can't highlight, click and highlight home. I can't highlight anything. Okay. That's just a little side point. Notice though that about doesn't have the same style as it used to. Why don't, why not? Yeah, it's not an anchor anymore, right? It's now a label. Well, all I got to do is find all the places where I styled the anchor and just put label there too, right? So here where I styled the anchor tag, we'll put target labels there. And here we'll target labels here. And here we'll target labels there as well that go label hover, right? And I think that's all of them. So now let's just refresh it and see if that fixed it. That looks better. And now I got the effect back, but we're not quite done. We want to now click on it and have that show or hide this menu. Also note, I don't have a finger pointy thing anymore, right? You can fix that too. Go into the label. So we'll just put it right here, label and cursor pointer. Cursor has a bunch of different options. You can make it a crosshair. You can make it the little thing that says not allowed, like the circle with the line through it. There's a bunch of different ones. Just go to W3 schools and look up all the different values you can put there. But pointer makes it a finger. So now it looks like it's clickable. It looks just like an anchor tag like the rest. Okay. All right. So now we want to turn that thing on or off based on the check mark being checked. Okay. Here we go. First thing, let's hide it, right? We want to hide the sub menu. So right here in your sub menu, display none. And now goodbye, gone. Now magically in a minute, when I click this, I want that to appear. Very easy to do using our little pseudo selectors. And so the label, let's look at what we're trying to target. We're trying to target this checkbox right here, right? And so I want to target the checkbox. So it's input Octothorpe about, that's the name of the ID, right? We learned that in the previous video. Input about, and then I want that when it is in the checked state. So this little colon then followed by something else is it's a state change, right? Colon hover. That's the pseudo class for when you're hover state colon checked where it was when you're in the check state. Okay. And we want to do something now. Keep in mind, I don't want to do anything to the checkbox. I want to do something to its sibling, right? It's sister or brother right here is the checkbox. I want to manipulate its sibling right here, the UL. Okay. There's a selector for that. It's called the adjacent sibling selector. That's the plus symbol. And then I just want to grab the UL. So here's what this target does. You ready from right to left. Give me all the ULs whose direct older sibling, which the one above it in the document directly above it is an input box that has a ID, an idea of about, 
and is currently in the checked status. Give me that element, which will be this guy right here whenever this guy is checked. Okay, then all I gotta do, display block, poof, it'll appear, easy. So now, click it, it appears. Unclick it, goes away. Click, 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 click. Now that checkbox is ridiculous, right? That's easy to fix too, because all you gotta do, remember, you don't have to click the checkbox to make it work. You just have to click about to make it work, right? If I click about, that works. So just hide the checkbox. And you can do that right here in the checkbox. Disabled, or not disabled, uh, hidden. That's it, you refresh. Now your menu looks exactly the same as before, except when I click on about, that appears and it stays there until I click it again. So that's it. Now notice the style here is a little weird, right? We can fix that in our CSS. If you want, I can do that real quick. So all we gotta do is just target those guys. Those are the anchors that are inside of the submenu LI. So we'll just go back here where we're targeting that. There's the submenu LI. We just want to target the submenu LI anchors, and we want to put those to display block. So they'll take up the full width of the LI. So now they're taking the full width, and if we just remove those rounded corners, we're good. So we just put the border radius to zero. And now that's kind of what we're looking for, right? If I want to put a border bottom on the owners there, to give it a little underline between the two, you could do that if you wanted to. But there you go, that's a submenu that will work on a mobile device. Now, obviously, it's really wide, right? We'll learn later how to shrink things up and make it fit properly. But now you can tap on that on a mobile device and it'll open up a menu. Okay, any questions? <laughs>